More action from Nottingham now. Chance to see a British champion, Asian Pickering. Holds the British Super Bantamweight title, 31 years old, loads of ability. He's got his size set on European honours. He's got a new trainer, which perhaps could give him a lift. This is Sean Hughes, the younger man by six years, turned pro in 2002, won the central area title. Uh, Johnny joined Adam. We can join the action in round four. If I was in Pickering's corner, I would say, look, we've got to con him now, we've got to hustle him, drag him into that trap, drag him into that web, make him come forward, and then you can pick him off, use your speed and your shots. If I was in user's corner, I'd say nice, simple, basic boxing. Nice job, nice right crosses, nice guards. Michael Marsden really trying to fire out the short fuse. Sean Hughes, that's what he calls himself, in the blue trunks. 25 years of age, he's lost six times. Rarely in a dull one, though. And he has caught Isham Pickering on more times than most. Right hand there from Hughes, who might just believe if he can stick with it that he could outbox Pickering here. And the way Pickering is boxing, it looks like he doesn't respect the power from Hughes because he'll get hit and still not slip and get hit with the same shot again. And when you come forward, you double that impact. It's that, that's a well-known fight in boxing. Well, that's risky, Johnny, and especially over eight rounds as well. Exactly, win or lose. He's uh, seriously got to think about his game plan and when he, just before he gets into the ring to fight. He's got to be able to change things around when things aren't going his way. He's such an experienced professional. You think he would be able to adapt very nicely. He had that great start against Michael Hunter in their fabulous clash for the uh, domestic Commonwealth and European Super Bantamweight titles in Hartlepool. Had Hunter down a couple of times and then ended up losing on points. But he showed his heart, determination, fitness, and his stubbornness to get through that fight. So he yeah, cut just under the right eye as well for Pickering. This isn't a good night. It's a struggle. Keep boxing, Sean, come on. The left. And straight in, Michael Marson rallying with encouragement. Also lost to uh, Bernard Dunn as well. Isham Pickering are his best days behind him. Simple basic to work for you, that's what he needs to think and needs to remember. Straight right jab, straight right, straight leg cross. Isham needs to get clever, turn it round, make you walk onto him, then pick him off with the jab. Jab to the body, that was something different from Pickering. Oh, left hand. That hurt him. That, that hurt him. That did it again. And Sean Hughes is finding these punches with the range. I don't think Sean Hughes knows he's rocked Isham there. He has no idea how hurt he is. Come on, come on, move. Apart from the blitz by Martinez when he was weight drained down at Bantamweight, Isham Pickering and knocked out. He's shown a pretty good chin over the years. I don't remember an undercard fight that Pickering's been involved in where he's been hit as much as he's been tonight. Second half of uh, an increasingly interesting featherweight fight here between Isham Pickering and Sean Hughes. Hughes very much the underdog, but he's had his success, his spells, and Pickering has not looked at his best. Now Pickering's getting a bit smart, he's not rushing in. He's waiting. He's got that crab light stance to try and draw him, but now he's getting clever. Just gets on the inside there, Pickering. He's won his last three. Hughes his last two. There's the left hand and the right. These head punches, straight, simple, and accurate. Basics, the basics, that's the that's the thing you build everything around, and that is probably all what Hughes has got, but it's working for him well here tonight. Nearly stopped Billy Corcoran in November last year here, and then got stopped himself. Has got talent, Hughes. Won a central area title, stopping Paddy Folan, and that was only his inside schedule distance win. Only one for Hughes, so maybe the 
lack of fizz in the punches that might let him down. Again, Pickering's leading with that back right hand lead, and it's shortening the distance for him, but it's working for Hughes because Hughes can just pick him off with his, his right hand jab. Body shot. And one to the head from Pickering. Sharpen up Sean Hughes. The advice from the corner. I mean, they know they can win this fight. Uh, yeah, and it's very tasty from, it's very tempting from, they don't want to get too over eager or too excited, but they're just trying to tend to settle down, do what you do in the gym, and they're expecting that to work for them. This is a lucky night for them, because this is not the issue we know we've seen. Again, he walks into one, he should pickering his uh, right eye just underneath it. Well. No good there, Sean. 13 knockouts in his 32 wins, Pickering. How he could do with one of those right now. And the backhand. Have a look at their faces, Johnny. Unbelievable. I mean, and, 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 and it's it's the, 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 the accuracy uh, from Hughes that he's getting in. It's, it's making it look so, so simple. That jab and the spring in the step of Sean Hughes. He's putting on a really good display here. Pickering still might believe he can grind Hughes down. Use that experience, but the, uh, the rounds are uh, running down. Is that another one for Hughes? Six minutes to go. Fascinating one, this. Pretty tight, but Johnny's unofficial card has Sean Hughes in front by a couple. Deserves to be in front. Seriously deserves to be out, surprisingly, but that's that's just how you've got to call it. Call it how you see it. Come on, Sean. Keep him there, he's been Keep fighting for a fog, really, here, Pickering. Just time and again, he walks into these countering straight punches from Sean Hughes. Let's just strip it down. Look when Hughes is backing off. He'll back off with two, three jabs. Two out of three of them will actually land. That's picking the points up. That's marking up Pickering's face. Pickering's trying to walk him down, but throwing nothing. As he's walking in, as he's just giving him the head and getting hit. Not as much experience. Hughes only been around since March 2002. He's never been afraid to take a challenge. Went in with Stephen Foster Jr. in only his ninth fight. Lost his unbeaten record, but took the chance and he's done it again here will it come good for him I think Piku feels as though he's a strong of a tool so he throws the, the hooks in uh, to the body and works inside when he's in close but he throws nothing to get in close and that's why he's in the situation he's in I've got to ask you Johnny do you think he's now on the slide he should pick or he gets caught with another right hand or has he just really badly assessed this fight? Because Sean Hughes is on the verge of his biggest win. Well, there's your answer, oh, there's your answer. He's in trouble, and there's over a minute to go in the seventh. And he's hanging on there, Isham Pickering. Summoning up that experience and the courage. Right hand nearly takes him off his feet. And Sean Hughes could be on the very brink here of something really big. He's flying in with these punches, and Pickering is wobbling over the ring. Might only need a couple more, Johnny. Come on, Sean. There's your answer, Adam. We wouldn't have seen Pickering in this situation two years ago against the Sean Hughes. Oh, he almost went down, sacked down there, he should Pickering. The tank is emptying. He's been outboxed. He's showing spirit, but he cannot get out of the way of these punches. He can't change the game plan. This is something he could do, but he no longer can do. That long left, that long right jab from Hughes is catching him right on the end. Just as Pickering thinks he's out of range. He's clinging into this fight. Remember, his British title not on the line, but his reputation and his career might be. There's the bell, he gets through the seventh, somehow. 
Cage. A you terrible know, round you for sure? Asian Pickering. Do you want to go out for this round? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. You, you, you go on here. Just go and pull you out. No, no, no way. Hey. No. No. I'm sure, mate. Yeah. yeah. Ish, you've got to stay close to him. To stay close to him, Ish. You've got to stay close to him. Right. He was thinking of pulling yourself. him out. What would Brendan Ingle have said in the corner you, if he'd still close. be with him? Well, I, I don't think he'd be in this situation, but he'd probably pull him out because he was getting hurt and getting hurt bad there in that round. Look how Hughes was just peppering him and letting the shots land. That long right, that long left from Hughes was hurting him. The long jabs from Hughes, just catching him on the edge when Pickering thought he was out of range. And oh, that's the shots, the second. shots that hurt you. They might have pulled him out if it had been a 10 rounder, a 12 rounder, but there's only one to go. Final session. They touch gloves. Sean Hughes must be ahead on the card of Sean Messer from Derby. He's had Eastern Pickering hurt a few times in this and almost out in the seventh round. We saw concern looks from the promoter, Mick Hennessy, as well. He also went in the corner to see how, he, uh, how Pickering was. So easily he outboxed Mark Callahan in March, winning every round, and Mark Callahan beat Sean Hughes. So we know he can do it. We know it can be done. You never know, though. The one guy's fired up and just gets into the groove. We saw it last week with Kevin McIntyre's performance against Kevin Anderson. The self-belief comes in. And Sean Hughes, I bet he feels like a winner in there tonight. Right, he's lifted his game, he's lifted his energy levels, he's lifted everything about his fight. Look at the, two, the difference in the two fighters. Right! Come on, Sean, get it back. I'll keep Cheers. Another threat in the super bantamweight division, looming large, and that's Rendell Munro, who beat Mark Callahan recently. So they're all in the mix, but Sean Hughes, well, he's gate-crashed the scene here. He's put his name right up there with this excellent performance. Pickering just doesn't seem hard to get out of the way. His feet are flat on the ground. When he's hit with a, a right-left combination, he doesn't step back to move out of the way. He just sways, still in range, and still getting picked up by Hughes. Oh, combination much stronger from Sean Hughes. The white shorts are bloodied of Pickering, the face is bloodied. And his heart is keeping him in there with Hughes. He's not on steady feet in his corner now, who seriously need to look and think the next time he's hurt, get that towel in. He's not on steady feet, Pickering. Less than a minute left, though, in the fight. John, come on, John! A minute left to A minute, John! He's just wading forward, Pickering. Just caught with too many clean shots early on. And again from Sean Hughes. He's shown what a threat he can be. He's trying, he's trying to bully. He's trying to bully Sean Hughes by dragging him and pushing him, but it's not enough. Hughes will come back with a combination, straight, basic combinations, and that is what's hurting him. Everybody's got a bogeyman. It looks like Hughes is Pickering's bogeyman tonight. Oh, left. Stumbles again, Pickering. And Sean Hughes, who's only had half the fights, not nearly the experience of Ishan Pickering. He's six years younger. He's not got the big promotional backing. But I tell you what, he's going to win wait this. Wait he must do. On every level, on every level. A terrible night for Ishan Pickering, and Sean Hughes is absolutely delighted. Rightfully gets the decision. Look what it means to him as he celebrates with trainer Michael Marsden. Get up, get up. 14th win in 21 fights, and he is ecstatic. And Ishan Pickering loses for the sixth time, and more worryingly, Johnny didn't look like he had a lot left. We saw a kid that wanted it more. Ishan Pickering looked very old tonight. He looked very ordinary. He looked very pedestrian. That is something we're just not used to seeing. Well done to Sean Hughes. He will milk the applause and the cameras. Didn't throw as many, but the accuracy and the success, the quality, and he made Pickering look like a novice at times. A raw novice. He's, he's, uh, surprisingly sad, surprisingly sad. Well done tonight to Sean Hughes.
Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of featherweight action, referee Sean Messer has scored the contest for Pickering at 75 points, for Hughes, 77 points. Your winner from Pontefract, Sean Hughes. Massive, it's biggest win of my career. You can't believe words can't express how fair I'm at the moment, as you saw when I went in ring and celebrating there. It's the best, best thing ever. Your record says you're not a puncher, only one stoppage before, so what happened there? Well, if you've watched before when I boxed Billy Corker and he hit me some good shots and I shook him up and I've done the same with Ishan Pickering today in the first round. It was shook him in the first round and I don't think he recovered from there. So it was a jab as well. So the jab was the key? The jab was key, we worked on it in training, we back, boxed on outside. It didn't always work to plan, but I st tried sticking to a game plan and it's worked out well. Do you now want a rematch with Ishan Pickering's British title on the line? Well, there's options available now, I'll see what comes ahead and, you know, take it from there. How confident would you be of doing the double over him with the title at well, stake? At 8 stone 10, it's £3 lighter than what we are now. It's only four rounds more, I'll just do the for another four rounds. So, it's there to be done. It's all set up for a, a rematch, isn't it, Nicky? Well, Sean Hughes deserves it, doesn't he? And would make a great prospect, because I, with all due respect to Sean Hughes, Ishan Pickering could not have trained properly for that fight. I'm not certainly not how he used to train. I can't believe a man would go that old that, as he looked tonight that quickly. Um, there's a few, of course, in front of Sean. Oh, you know, Randall Monroe will be thinking he's he's next in line. But it would make a good fight and um, and in, interest him because I think Ishan Pickering can only get better. Well, well, what did go wrong for Ishan Pickering? You know him well, Johnny. I just think it's some days that some fighters have just got to know when to call it at end. What I saw there, I can't think of an excuse for it. And I, I basically think Isham should seriously think about walking away from the game because we've seen him perform a, a lot better than that. We, we've seen him outbox people sharper, uh, on his feet, uh, in his reactions to punches. Anything he did didn't work. Was, and I'd be surprised to see him. There was no speed again. in his punches at all. No, no zip gone. in his legs or his, his, his arms at all. And um, I can't believe he just lost it there. No, plus, the other thing is, if you're the British champion and you believe you're the best in the country and you are beaten like that, it's going to shatter your confidence, shatter everything you believe in yourself. So it's going to make a difference. Well, uh, a man who's uh, very high on confidence right now in our main event, Carl Froch. Mutual respect with uh, Robin Reid. Uh, Froch retains his British super middleweight title. Robin Reid forced to retire in the fifth round and has announced his retirement this evening. <laughs>